Hi there, John Hans Connect here. Uh, I'm making this video to help people put together their China Leather Shoe Patcher when they buy my kit. Um, some people are asking me why I'm sending out shorter belts. I had a client that uh, showed me how compact it can be with a shorter belt. And uh, I decided to modify mine for the shorter belt as well. And uh, this is how it's all laid out. And it all, it all works just fine. Um, the, the pinion gear, uh, its purpose is to squeeze here to uh, get more thread engagement, more teeth engaged on the belt. Um, I guess it probably could work without it, but I, I recommend using it. Um, the pinion gear is mounted on an L bracket you could get from the hardware section or the building materials section. This could be an L bracket that's a brace for 2x4 construction, like deck, a deck brace or something. That's uh, screwed into my elevated wood. Oops, I'm not pointing at it. Um, I'll, I'll describe this elevation here in a second. Uh, first, let me just show... Uh, with with the one nut and washer and the other nut on the back side, everything should be fine for distance wise. This L bracket is just scooched up pretty close uh, to the wheel. And uh, it's out of the way though. So that's, it's guiding the belt. Everything's working good for there. That's screwed to that. The main motor housing assembly, uh, I cut off the ass end of mine just because it wasn't needed. And I just drilled a hole and sent a wood screw through to my uh, burrow bracket there. And here's here's another screw. Rather than trying to find some big bolt that would hold it, the forces in, in this machine are not strong that you would need a big bolt there. So it's just a little tiny screw holding it. It's a wood screw. Um, what else can I say about it? Let me describe the uh, foot pedal. On um, the standard thing, that foot pedal, or the speed controller is mounted to, to the motor, usually, uh, on that bracket that I cut away. Um, and I just had a 50-pound lead brick. And so I screwed the thing to that. And then I put an extension rod, and so I can just hit that with my foot. And it, it gives uh, fairly good control. Uh, I wanted to explain how I mounted my machine to the, to the sawhorse. Uh, this first 2x4, um, I screwed down with deck screws. And so there it was by itself. The second 2x4, I put in, I, I pre-drilled for a bolt that was going to go through this way. And I pounded in, they, they call these, uh, well, I don't remember what they call them. You can get these at Home Depot or McMaster Car as well. But this way, when the bolt is going through the top, it's passing through and it's quarter 20 clearance and it pinches and so it's trying to pull up on that so that's how that bolts working and then there's more deck screws that were sent through from this one into this one because i didn't have super long deck screws that would go through two two by fours and uh i think that describes everything you need to know um you don't have to go tight on the tension of this belt. It can be relatively loose because you got to be able to just easily pull it off for bobbin winding and then easily throw it back on. Uh, what else? This is just RTV'd in place. Uh, some people might want to shrink it. I actually don't recommend shrinking, shrinking it. Just... Uh, Fill in the gap with some RTV. And if you notice as it's running that there's some wobble, you know, in the belt or anything, as long as it's got the tooth engagement, it doesn't matter if, if it looks like it's wobbly. 
like out of balance. What else? Uh, so there we go. I uh, used some LED strip lights that are really nice. And I just have a 12 volt transformer for that. Uh, I got those like from AliExpress or something. The type that you can cut to any length you want. So I just RTV glued it to the bottom. And uh, so it's really good illumination. All right, I hope this helps you. All right, bye.